I'm performing an interference test on antennas with various materials, fiberglass, carbon, etc., to see how, what effect they have on the antenna. Here we have the N9TAX 2 meter motor band, an excellent Slim Jim roll up, about 2 dBi gain, despite what the manufacturer might tell you, connected to a VNA with a camera pointed at it so we can observe the S11 results. You can tell at the moment that the N9TAX comes in at a very nice 146, just above a nice deep S11. This is an excellent antenna. Good for our tests. To get a feel for the reaction, let's do some uh, known tests. Let's put a 2 meter aerial, namely the layered 2 meter infed half wave mobile antenna. We'll just swing it right in and out of the N9TAX and observe the re results and see the effect on S11. In contrast, let's take a non-conductive wooden, this is the official Potomac Appalachian Trail Club wooden walking stick. Move that in and out. Okay, so that's a known antenna and a non-conductor to give us a good idea of what happens to the antenna performance. Now, let's grab a fiberglass surf casting rig. Sigma BWS 1600, it is a fiberglass. Nylon line, the only thing conductive are the eyelets. Let's see what happens. We move it in and out. Okay. Next we have my pride and joy. The Pin Carnage 2, 100% fiber, uh, carbon fiber with a graphite outer coating. Very conductive. It's in two segments, so the segments are nice and long. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now we move on to known soda gear. This is a 20-foot fiberglass kite pole with a black finish. Let's see what that does. And finally, the soda beams, carbon six, just picked this up from DX Engineering. Very compact, very lightweight. The segments are very short and shouldn't be much of an effect if they're independently conductive, but there should be some capacitive coupling to basically make this carbon thing, this carbon tube, one giant conductor. Let's see what it does. And just for fun, let's put the antenna to the Charvel test. And lastly, the old Antler test. I always suspect the presence of my hand has more of an effect on this than the actual antlers. There you go. Let's review the results. On the right, we have the return loss plot of the N9TAX antenna in free space. A very good antenna, minus 20 or so dB return loss. Good bandwidth. We put the wood walking stick next to it. It actually improves the depth of the return loss a little bit, but pretty much the same behavior. And now with the fiberglass kite pole, we see a little bit of a detuning downward, which is what you would expect with a dielectric material near the high voltage points of an antenna. And the same thing with a fiberglass fishing pole. This is a similar effects to when you put something like a Slim Jim inside a PVC pipe. It'll actually lower the frequency a little bit and alter it. But pretty much the antenna remains the same function. 
Now we have a look at the layered mobile antenna, which is essentially a half wave wire near the antenna. And we can see it dramatically lessens the performance of the antenna. Same with the big carbon fishing pole. Basically, this is an, a conductor which is re-radiating and spoiling the patterns, most certainly. You know, sometimes in a Yagi, that's what we want. And then, of course, the carbon-6 from Soda Beam conducts and has the same exact behavior as the Laird Mobile antenna nearby. So, I think we can say all the ones on the left are non-conductors, and all the ones on the right are conductors and behave similarly in each group. So, once again, summary, non-conductors have a benign effect on antenna performance. It's not zero, but it doesn't spoil the performance, whereas any conductor near the antenna is going to have an appreciable effect and mess with your pattern quite a bit. So what does this mean for us? Just assume that anything made from carbon fiber with the strands along the axis of strength is going to be conductive. Just use them as if you were using a conductive metal pole in your antenna supports. Horizontal antennas, just fine. Just resist the temptation to hang antennas parallel with any conductor at any frequency. We see similar issues from the markets out there. Real carbon fiber covers for the antennas on top of vehicles. If they really are carbon fiber, we'll make them not work as an antenna. Something's wrong here, I'm not sure, but it sure looks good now, doesn't it? Thanks for watching.